specifically that the reason he wanted to play the card was to get through Hornet Queen tokens. And uh, Ranjan actually will have to get through some Hornet Queen tokens in order to win this match. The, the, there is a Hornet Queen in Derek's deck. Derek playing the uh, more traditional green-red ramp mana guys and big burly animals monsters deck. So Derek's going to kick off with an Elvish Mystic. Ranjan had the uh, Sandstep Citadel tap. Going to take a peek with Thought Seize. We see, speak of the devil, Hornet Queen herself. Uh, pull a Kronos, Arbor Colossus, Sylvan Caryatid, and two lands. This is very interesting because this hand has all the makings of just a green devotion list. If I was in Rajan's seat right now, I would just assume that's what I'm playing against, maybe touching red for Crater's Claws or Xenagos or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. This is a red-green deck. There's Stormbreath Dragon. There's, you know, other red cards as well. So the slot seas might lead Rajan a little bit astray this game. Yeah, the, the basic mountain, really the only, like, tip-off that, that were more a traditional aggro -y, mid range sort of deck. Although, of course, even the like the full-blown four Nykthos Devotion decks are going to make room for one mountain because they have wooded foothills. Right. Uh, and Ranjan, Ranjan is going to get rid of that Hornet Queen. An indication that he's settling up for a pretty long game here, mm -hmm. as there's no immediate risk of Derek putting that into play, but if he thinks the game's going to go on for a very long time, that's the most potent card in his hand. Yeah, yeah. If, if both players get to just lay their cards out on the table and compare them, I feel like Hornet Queen kind of wins that comparison most yes. of the time. So... Ranjan, I'm pretty eager to get that get that out of the way if we're assuming that, uh, that Derek's going to get to cast most of his spells. Uh, Sark and the Dragon Speaker was the draw for Derek, but going to take a scry with this temple and likely be getting that Sylvan Carrington into play and set himself up to start playing some whammies next turn. I mean, this curve is beautiful. We're looking at a, a turn three Sarkin from Derek's side of the table right now. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what Ranjan can do to put a little pressure on. Corsair of Crufix. The epitome of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm actually not quite sure what that, what that is. I believe Another that's a courser. second courser. Yeah, okay. I was talking to Cedric about this last round. I've literally never revealed a land in my life to, to Courser of Prefix. just doesn't happen. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so he says. Yeah. Well, I've never even seen someone in the booth do it, or in the, in the feature match area do it either. Oh, okay. I thought you meant in your own personal. Well, that too. It just doesn't happen <laughs> for anyone. Uh, it's not going to happen still because that Corsair Prufix is gone. Sarkin, the Dragon Spear, are going to come down, do its best Flame Tongue Cavu impersonation, shoot it out, and linger to start attacking for four. And I like that play from Derek just because this deck, you know, there's Hero's Downfalls, there's Utter Ends. Not valuing his Planeswalker too highly right now. If, if Rajan happens to not have a removal spell, great, then he can start plussing it. But just wants to make sure that he gets him while the getting's good. Yeah, get your value out of it. And Rajan considering his options, I'm not sure if there's a fourth land in that hand. If there was, I think Siege Rhino is, is, is coming down and, and mooing, but uh, not an option. Corsair Prefix number two going to reveal Corsair Prefix number three, just like I said. And now Rajan really behind the eight ball here. Yeah, the world is, is kind of Derek's oyster at this point. Has access to Polychronos and Arbor Colossus. Both of those things are huge. Uh, going to play a Temple of Abandon. I believe that was a Storm Breath Dragon we got a peek of there. Yeah. And the Many-Headed Hydra himself. And this is, a, this is a great play. It would have been very easy to just say, all right, I'll just cast Arbor Colossus. But the problem there is if Rajan has a removal spell for the Arbor Colossus, then, uh, you know, the Corsair gets to finish off the Sarkin. You've lost a lot. This way, even if there's a removal spell, he keeps the Sarkin or the Polychronos. Much better sequencing. Yeah, he has to leave back that Sylvan Caryatid and... Uh, keep the Corsair from poking in for two. Uh, Thought sees from Ranja. I'm going to take a peek. Sees Arbor Colossus, the only takeable spell. Going to leave Derek with a land in play and a Storm Breath Dragon on top. Not that he knows that. But he's going he's gonna to find it out real quick, I'm pretty sure. Ships back. Uh, Hero's Downfall at the ready. And with Rajan having stalled on lands, I don't think Derek's going to... Derek's going to believe that there's a removal spell sure. in his hand, but... Between the Pelucranos, the Sarkin, and the Stormbrow Dragon, he's easily overwhelming one removal spell. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it matters if, if one of your threats gets killed here. So, fetching out the land. Likely we're going to see him jam that Stormbreath into play. And I assume we swing with everything here. I mean, if we're... Yes. Uh, I don't think I would send... The, I'm not sure if I would send in the Mystic. Sure. I mean, well... I guess if you if, if you let Ranjan block the Mystic, then you get through for 
at least eight, maybe nine. Well, I think it's and, one of those things where it's questionable if Rajan should be chumping this turn anyway. Sure. So you definitely let him off the hook by attacking with the Elvish Mystic, because that gives him an easy block. Okay. Well, is it, does he actually... He's just dead if he doesn't chump, right? Five, nine, well, he has a he has a downfall in oh, hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So I like not attacking here from Derek because I think okay. Rajan would not jump block this turn anyway, which he's not doing. Sure. And if you send the Elvish Mystic in, that's a pretty easy block. Okay. So as you predicted, the three big, scary mythic attackers are going to come in. Uh, Hero's Downfall going to take care of the Storm Breath Dragon, leaving Rajan at three, facing down Polychronos, Sarkin the Dragon Speaker, and some mana guys. Now next turn, it gets attracted to send with the Elvish Mystic. Mm -hmm. Because it's unlikely Rajan can generate two removal spells. And he needs to do exactly that yeah. to not have to chump block the, pol the Polukronos on the following turn. Mm -hmm. As it stands, we are likely in Siege Rhino mode here. So I believe that's another Hero's Downfall. Okay. So just going to pass. Sit on the Hero's Downfall. And looks like an upkeep target of Sarka and the Dragon Speaker. So that leaves Derek with just Polychronos and Ranjan with just a Corsair of Krufix to throw it to throw under the bus of that Polychronos. So I think Derek right now looking at a, a Polychronos on the top of his deck. I'm not sure if he wants to move that or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a weird spot. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm okay drawing it, actually. It's a good insurance policy because yeah. most likely Ranjan needs to kill it outright mm -hmm. for him to be able to survive this game. So I think you can risk the dead draw. Yeah, so just, and it looks like Derek did keep it. So you know it's coming. Derek would then crash in. Ranjan, of course, cannot block the Elvish Mystic, has to chump block. She does. So Ranjan going to fall to three. And drawing a Fleece Main Lion. Or, Okay, I thought, was, I thought he had Fleeceman Lion on top, but I guess that's not what that was. He drew oh, the there, there it is. Okay, okay. Yeah. all right. Yes, Fleeceman Lion. Uh, is that the fourth Corsair of Crewfix this game? Believe so. Still no land, mind you. <laughs> uh, and so Derek gonna untap. Now has that insurance policy. Let's see, does he have enough? It looks like he does. Gonna gonna monstrous the Polychronos to eat the Fleeceman Lion, I believe. And just run back the same turn from yeah, before. Sure. Attack, force a chump block. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rajan gets to draw a hero's downfall, but then you have the Pelucranos' back up in your hand, yeah. and all is well in the world. Yeah, if, if, if Rajan had a removal spell, he was surely using it there. And I'll, as the board looks right now, Rajan can only do this for two more turns anyway. But for the record, I believe Rajan did find one land off of his course, right? I believe land number four. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, the temple. You're right. All right. So. All right, and this makes it a little easier. Yeah, there we go. Rajan was sitting on a hero's downfall to buy that one last turn, but... Storm Breath Dragon is going to show up, close things out the way a Storm Breath Dragon does. And from what I've watched so far this weekend, this matchup feels pretty solid for Green Red Monsters. Derek's mm -hmm. deck is a lot different than the one we had on camera earlier, whereas found room for four copies of Sylvan Carry added, which makes his deck, of course, much more mana heavy, mm -hmm. much more mana acceleration oriented. But I think the mixture of Storm Breath Dragon and Sarkin and just uh, playing things ahead of schedule. Very hard for Obzon midrange that doesn't really get the ball rolling until turn three. Yeah, Derek's list is, is more reminiscent of the Green Red Monsters decks from last standard season. Actual just like eight mana guys and big rumblers mm -hmm. rather than the uh, the full blown like four Nykthos, like 12 mana guy, like kind of go crazy situation. Right. So what's Derek got on the board over here? Derek is looking at two Anger of the Gods, two Portent of Betrayal, three Destructive Revelry, two Genesis Hydra, uh, one Hornet Queen to go with the one in the main, two Arbor Colossus, uh, one Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx, to go with the one already in the main, and one Nyssa World Waker. So Portent of Betrayal is the four-cost after treason would scry one? Yes. That's very odd to see in Derek's list here, especially because he, he generates so much mana that it seems like Harness by Force would be awesome here. Yeah. Hmm. I guess, well, uh, Double Red might be the issue here. Well, he's, already well, casting, he actually, he's already casting Storm Breath, right? Yeah. Kind of, that ship's already sailed. Sure. Seven, four, six mountains. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree. I guess Harness by Force would, seems like the more powerful card. I don't know, scrying for one. It's, it's not, it's not it's shabby. It's a moral victory. You, you should always scry for one if you can. Well, what's really powerful when you're casting Threaten is 
casting the second threaten because then they're, sure, down, sure. they're down a blocker and you're up right. an attacker. Yeah, so. it's, it's like you always cry one and it's always a threaten and you always draw it. <laughs> and, and you get the it. same turn. Yeah, fair enough. In any uh, case. Is, is, that a, is that an effect you actually want in this matchup? Not really. No, okay. I think that it, Rajan's game plan is more about removal than blockers because his creatures are pound for pound okay. less effective than Derek's. All right. So I don't think he's going to go to it. Okay, I think and then he's just looking at the two additional Genesis Hydra and the second Hornet Queen. Yep. On Rajan's side, an Erase, two Back to Nature, three Drown Sorrow, two Elspeth Sun's Champion, two Hornet Queen, a Temple of Silence, a Whip of Erebos, a Murderous Cut, a Silence of the Believers, and a Despise. I bring in the Despise, the Silence of the Believers, and the Murderous Cuts for sure. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not sure if you want Elspeth and or Hornet Queen. They both seem... Like, fine, expensive cards to have, but don't necessarily line up the right way against Derek's threats all the time. Yeah, this is a kind of a gearing up sideboard. Uh, I was talking about this last round. It seems like almost the, one of the hallmarks of this format is that nearly every deck kind of starts one way, whether it be like beginning as an aggro deck and then boarding into control or beginning as mid-range and then boarding into an aggro deck or something like that. So it kind of feels like Ranjan's list is set up to start mid-rangey too aggressive yep. and then shift up to being a more controlling like full-blown mid-range board control deck right so before we get started with game two over here we want to talk about SCG game night which is a program SCG has been running for a little while now we moved it from Wednesday night to any night that the store wants to run it mm -hmm. uh, we give out pins and foils starcitygames.com slash game night for more information it's too late to sign up for November's kit but if you're interested in getting on board with December go online and sign up now do you ever think you'd see a Q news? I, d I do not question Star City Games' ability to put out a cute anything okay, anymore. Fair enough. That's clearly a core competency of this company. Fair enough. Yeah, Liz Nugent, the artist there, she's she's been behind uh, all of the the creature collection pins and tokens and sleeves and all of that. Um, and Ooze, yeah, just w one of the many. But look at that little guy. He's he's, he's frightening but delightful. Yeah, just slimy yet cuddly. Like a. Nightmare Before Christmas kind of stylized. <laughs> Cute, but right, yeah. still keeps its frightening roots. Absolutely. You did, you, did, you did touch on a very interesting point here, as you see Rajan mulliganing down to six here, which is Magic nowadays feels like, when I was playing a lot of standard 10 or 12 years ago, the linear decks, the combo decks were so powerful mm -hmm. that you had to be boarding in cards to beat particular strategies. Right. Your opponent was a combo deck that could kill you on turn three, or they were playing with a bunch of green creatures are trying to rush you out. Now it feels like the way Magic is now, it's more about answering individual cards, at least in Standard, than it is about trying to fight strategies. Right. Well, uh, kind of yes and no. I mean, like, it, well, y yes it is, but that doesn't change between post and pre-board. Right, I don't think. yeah. yeah. Uh, you're still trying to, like, trade your Fossies and, he and, and Heroes Downfalls for, like, the best cards possible. There are some, there are some decks, like, you know, the boss slide list that are about strategy rather than yeah. fighting specific cards. But in matchups like this, it feels like it's much more about strategy. Yeah, and I think one of their biggest or strengths... specific cards rather, not yeah. strategy. One of, the, one of the biggest strengths of those decks has been that they kind of get to not play the whole, like, trade your trade your rare for mine kind of game. Exactly. Uh, we're getting started in game two. Ranjan down to six cards on a mulligan here. And looks like a turn one Elvish Mystic from Derek to get the party started. Derek's hand flush with acceleration again, an Elvish Mystic on turn one, and a uh, carry out ready to go for turn two, potentially. Mm -hmm. Ranjan gonna take a peek. Sees that carry added. Course of Crucifix, Crater's Claws, Lightning Strike, Genesis Hydra, and a Mountain there at the end. So again, a little of everything. Um, Courser is probably the most reasonable card to take on curve. Yeah, Courser and Genesis Hydra, this feels like this is yeah. the decision between these two cards. Yeah, Genesis Hydra, of course, the, the most powerful spell that Derek has access to. Uh, but going to be a little ways, you know, uh, several turns and a couple more mana sources Derek needs to find before that Genesis Hydra is like a really problematic card. Correct. Uh, whereas Corsair Prefix, if it finds lands, which I mean, who knows, you know, uh, that feels like maybe the, the more immediate concern. And you can see a, a problem with the Obzon midrange deck here is Rajan's hand is two heroes downfalls and Elspeth some land. Mm -hmm. No way to generate card advantage and susceptible to just mana acceleration into big stuff. Yeah. Now, Elspeth kind of generates card advantage. Well, that's assuming you get to keep it. Down the road, we yeah. might be talking about that. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, and not even that far. You know, Ranjan is basically going to get to uh, trade. Well, okay. 
Or you can just miss a land yeah, drop. Yeah. And it turns out he didn't have a third <laughs> land drop anyway, so I guess not, not a problem. But um, if he had that third land, he was just basically going to get to trade like spell for spell for the next two turns. He's actually going to get to do that anyway as he plays Fleece Main Lion off the top. Uh, Derek's going to spend his turn killing it off with Lightning Strike, poking in for one with that Elvish Mystic. And uh, re replacement Fleece Main Lion. I think that's a spot where Derek probably should have just cast the Pelucranos last turn out of respect for mana efficiency because there's no threat of Rajan going monstrous next turn. So I'd rather just spend the maximum amount of mana now and then Lightning Strike it down the line when it matters. Yeah, I agree. But uh, Derek's going to keep the board clear. So going to play Crater's Claws, kill that second Fleece Main Lion. Uh, again, I, I feel like this is actually playing Ronjon's game. Exactly. Now he gets to trade his downfall for Derek's turn this turn. Mm -hmm. Probably Derek's turn next turn. Yep. And if he makes his land drops, he might be able to get to Elspeth at a high life total and a relatively clear board. Yeah, just Elspeth versus mana, guys. Uh, pull Kronos to play for Derek. Hero's downfall, predictably, the play right back for Ronjon. Got to pass the turn with mana up again. Hero's downfall available. Now, you, you do get into the spot eventually where you're trying to trade Hero's downfall with Genesis Hydra. Sure. But we're not quite there yet, and Derek is just going to play Polkronos number two. It meets the same downfall as his, uh, his previous copy. And the Fossey is off the top from Ranjan. Going to take a peek again. Uh, now two Genesis Hydras and an Elvis Mystic there. So. I guess Derek held back on the Elvis Mystic last turn out of respect for Bioblade. Okay. Yeah, he chose to attack with Elvis Mystic rather than play the, the second copy. That is odd. He may, he may add respect for Bible Ladder or, or end hostilities. hostilities. Yep. All right. So just going to unfurl the, the, the full-blown mana acceleration here. Rattleclaw Mystic off the top, along with that Elvish Mystic that was already there. Uh, Derek now has access to going to be seven mana, at least, on his next turn. Though I think in that spot, Derek would have been better served just morphing the Rattleclaw Mystic, because it's more mana when you get the Unmorph. So if you have the mana to spare, there's really no, no reason not to play a face down. Also, if he wants to attack next turn with the Elspeth, it's nice to have a two toughness creature as opposed yep. to a one toughness creature. Small thing, I doubt he's attacking, but... Yeah. With the Genesis Hydra in hand, I just all I want is the most mana. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's one fewer peaks that he gets to take with the Genesis Hydra, which is, you know, certainly could be relevant. And uh, just as we, as we drew it up earlier, you know, Ranjan, Going to get to cast that Elspeth, make three tokens, and really only has mana guys to contend with for now. Although, here comes Genesis Hydra. Subject to change. Yep. Spin the wheel. I don't miss Bloodbraid Elf. This is a, this is a working man's Bloodbraid Elf. <laughs> yeah. So, well, there's a Sarkin. That's, that's not shabby. Yeah, that's going to do. Or, or Arbor Colossus. I'm, I would lean towards Sarkin here, but... Well, the ground's getting locked up. Yeah. So I think that Derek's plan here against opponent with no hand, just take Sarkin and hope he can't find an answer in a few turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Sarkin's going to not quite kill the Elspeth, but... Uh, I'm not even interested in killing the Elspeth. Okay, you just, we're just going for the head? I mean, these tokens don't matter too much. Fair. I guess, I, yeah, well... Yeah. Going, over the, uh, going to Elspeth over the course of two turns seems a lot less efficient than putting him to one, if you assume that your Sarkin's unchecked. Sure. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's so weird doing that when, when your opponent's at nine rather than eight. Well, he's got but... Crater's Claws. He's got Lightning Strikes. He's got, he's yeah, got okay. things that, sure. that matter. That's fair. And then, of course, the, this Elspeth, if, if, if you leave the Elspeth unchecked, it also like, eventually gets out of hand. But, uh, but maybe not, not fast enough to matter. This is the... Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, Ranjan gonna... Oh, he, he did go to the Elspeth. Okay. So, Elspeth's going to fall to one loyalty, and Ronjan's going to take it back up and pass it right back. You know, if, uh, if you do go to the head, then the, as uh, you know, Derek plays Corsair of Krufix, takes Beacon of Polychronos, if you do attack uh, Ronjan with that, that Sarkin, then... I'm trying to think. Am, am no, I, am I behind, off? he's behind going ultimate. He is? Okay. Yes. Like, so, like, Ronjan would go to negative three that before he would get to ultimate? Correct. Okay. Then yeah, I guess in that case, I, I would be inclined to agree. Although, well, the turn when you have nine tokens, you can also probably attack past the mana guys, but then you're at one, so... Exactly, yeah. I, I think... I understand the, the urge to just, to just trade off there, but I think if Derek assumes he's getting in two clean hits with the Sarkin, because mm -hmm. he can't attack on the ground, he's better off just going ahead and uh, going at Rajan instead of the Elspeth. Mm -hmm. Ranjan had a 
not, it looked like an Absin charm. And I'm not sure what, what his... It looked like he, he tried to charm the Sarkin and then realized he couldn't do that quite yet and had already tipped his hand. And now this is a, this is a big problem because Derek can just start attacking on the ground yep. and using Sarkin to... Maybe he wants to shoot down a token, maybe he just does nothing. Yeah. But now this is a, a big problem for Rajan because I think he was banking on that Obzon charm taking care of the Sarkin, and now that plays off the table. Yeah, and especially once Derek gets to untap with that pull of Kronos, which he you know, did draw and cast, that's going to... Yeah, that, I think he can take out all of the remaining tokens. Well, there's only one left at this point, but even if he hadn't attacked there, I'm pretty sure he could have cleared the board. Correct. And now what? Now what is Rajan supposed to do? He may even have to just draw two cards. Yeah, just cash it in, sign in blood, and try and find two two removal spells. I guess. I think Rajan was in a fair amount of trouble anyway. He was. But this has not helped. No. Yeah, Genesis Hydra kind of did what Genesis Hydra does when it gets cast for, for X is five. Yep. Um, you know, Sark and the Dragon Speaker certainly played admirable mop-up duty as well. And it looks like we're crashing in. No. So Ron's going to take a peek. Is, is not going to you know, in-step sign and blood. And the Sarkin has gone ultimate at this point. <laughs> so we're... That's not a bad consolation prize. Yeah, why not? I mean, if you can't attack with it. Right. All right, well... <laughs> I think this might be a first for SCG Live. <laughs> yeah. First Sarkin emblem. Nice. I have an actual physical Sarkin emblem just hanging out. Storm Breath Dragon going to join the party. Polkarana, Storm Breath, Genesis Hydra. All attacking. Any two are lethal. Ems and Charm going to take care of one. Murder's Cut going to take care of the another and Chum Blocker for the third. So only Genesis Hydra left on the table. Not a bad turn for Ranjan, but... Unfortunately, the Sarkin emblem is <laughs> yeah. no joke. No. Especially in a spot where Crater Claws is going to be lethal. Yeah, I mean, there are plenty of live draws for Derek. He gets to take two every turn. Ranjan gets to take two this turn as well. Draws and casts Abs and Charm in Sign and Blood mode. Find Siege Rhino, that's big. I still think he's on, he's not on necessarily on chump blocking detail, but. No, not this turn. He's close. So if he, okay, so looks like. And now the Sarkin does force a chump yeah. block. Yeah, okay. So I was thinking you, you only got two cards. But I guess you get, you get two plus your draw step. Yeah, not it's bad. It's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of cards. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the Sarkin uh, is going to come in for half of Ranjan's life total regardless. And yeah, we've got to throw the Rhino underneath the 5-5 Genesis Hydra and still fall to two. I don't think we're getting out of this one. I don't think so either, because even something like Doom Blast now is covered by the Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. Not to mention Derek's several draws a turn. Yeah, even if we had something like... Uh, okay, I guess, well. we're, <laughs> guess we'll play on for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sure. Let's see what happens. Yeah, even if we had, like, a planar cleansing effect to actually clear the board properly. Yeah. Three cards a turn is going to, you know, solve that problem within a turn for Derek, I think. Yeah, Hornet Queen here will be able to do a lot of blocking, but again, keep in mind, Derek with a lot of burn spells in this deck. <laughs> yeah. So three looks at, uh, we know he played one Crater's Claws, one Lightning Strike earlier, so it looks like he is on a five-outer to draw a burn spell and just clear, you know, end the game right now. And that's three three peaks. Does not find a burn spell. Finds a Xenagos and a Storm Breath Dragon. A lot of options. <laughs> all right. We did, we did get a land off, of course, or after yeah, all. There you go. Fine. <laughs> Powerful card. And Derek doing the math to see if he can actually get through that last point of damage through all of these Death Touch flyers. I don't think we're there yet. No, what he can do is actually just play Storm Breath and pass the turn. And then the ultimate will kill Ranjin. Uh, you know, well, you know. Probably, yeah. yeah. But uh, just going to get it into play and... Okay, going to attack. We're bringing the pain. All of these are lethal attacks, so I mean, that's... These are reasonable blocks for Rajan, but again, it's just 
with no pressure in play at one, trying to beat this emblem, I think, is going to be almost impossible. Yep. I'm, I'm tempted to pull a Cedric here and say, if Ranjan wins, I will do a cartwheel. Yeah. I have, I have no intention of paying off that statement, by the way. This is a it's, much, I, I believe this yeah. board state's a bigger lock than the one that, yeah. that Cedric made that claim on. I agree. So Ranja, I didn't catch what he drew. Oh, there it was. Yeah, Siege Rhino, already in play. Yep. Siege Rhino with, almost with flash. It was in there so fast. Uh, up to four, so still just dead, this Arkin. So the... Is it Chuck Oh, no, block? no, we do have the one, well, the one token. Uh, Derek, again, going to take three peaks to find a burn spell. We no longer get to see them all as they come off, so... It looks like just a Xenagos. Two lands in a Xenagos. Mm -hmm. Find well, takes a scry. Up, looks like put a land on on the bottom there. So the uh, the Sarkin, of course, is indestructible once it's attacking. So uh, the Death Touch Insect, actual chump blocker, rather than actually getting rid of the threat. Not a big fan of the of the token attack here because it, you know. Yeah, I don't. Understand. Rajon has to block. Yeah. So I guess he doesn't. I didn't have to. He'd fall to two. He, he gained some life from that siege rhino. So sure. But I, again, can't, yeah. You can't bite the Sarkin, so. Yeah, I don't know. Really, all for naught. Yep. Th this was very much kind of a, a garbage time situation. Like, it didn't really seem like it mattered what Derek did much at that stage. All right. Derek Thrill, two games to zero with Green Red Monsters, a deck we've ha seen have a lot of success on camera so far this weekend. And depending on breakers, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but potentially the spot to draw into the top eight next round. Yeah, not a deck that I think had a lot of hype. Even you know, going into the standard season and even after the Pro Tour, and it was just kind of a deck that was there. Mm -hmm. People knew it was there. I think but the Grand Prix in Los Angeles has given it a shot at credibility, won mm -hmm. that event. Uh, in, in, but there's a lot of room for customization, too, so yeah. you never know what exact build you're going to be playing against. Derek's build, much different than the one we had on camera earlier today. Sure. And honestly, the, this deck is not so, so far from the, the teamer decks that have been building Steam. Uh, so, yeah, like, there is room for customization, even in the sense that, like, you can play knuckle blades if you'd like. For sure.